Hey guys, my name is Peter Kay. I'm the newest member of the Everything EOS team. I'm a developer. I'll be focusing more on technical content. You'll be seeing some developer courses coming out. Keep an eye out for them. They're going to be great. Uh, but we'll also be doing these short little videos on the latest moves in the EOS development space. And uh, the one I want to talk about today is Liquid Apps VRAM. It's actually DAP services. It's a whole suite of DAP services uh, being provided by DSPs, DAP service providers. But there's more to it than just VRAM, but the VRAM is the first thing that's really going to be fleshed out. So it's being talked about as just VRAM. And uh, as we know, EOS has trouble with RAM. You ever get it on an EOS account and try to use some stuff and it says you don't have enough RAM and then you got to go buy RAM. And uh, there's a speculation market around RAM. And RAM is supposed to just be the memory that a program uses right now and during its execution, not storage and long-term storage, things like that. Uh, but uh, right now on EOS, it's being used as long-term storage and uh, the better contracts will delete things that aren't needed. But still, if you have accounts with dApps, if you have like progress with dApps, you have uh, token balances, whatever with dApps, you have uh, even history with dApps that's relevant to the future operation of the dApp, uh, all those things are kept in RAM. And there's only 64 gigabytes of it. As you can imagine, that can't really hold a lot of dApps. So we need another solution. And uh, layer two solutions are a big thing in the blockchain space. And and you might have this like sense that layer two solutions are more centralizing, that you're making some trade-offs for speed and capacity. You're kind of trading away maybe decentralization or some other aspect. I mean, I like layer two solutions. I have a, I have a lightning node running right now, uh, but this is different. This layer two solution, if anything, is going to increase decentralization. And uh, Liquid Apps has put forth a vision and a plan of action where this layer two solution will make it so not only the smart contract and its execution, but the entire dApp from front end all the way to back end will be decentralized, even hosting. So like you don't ever have a centralized choke point along the way. How in the world do they do that? Well, there are going to be DAP service providers on the network that provide resources. And the first one is storage, which we're calling VRAM. I guess that's virtual RAM. An article just came out yesterday with more details on how this works. So if I'm a smart contract, I usually keep all my information right in RAM for easy access. There's not really an easy way to do it otherwise right now. There are some plugins to other databases. You could rig up your own IPFS solution. But VRAM promises to be an easy plug and play solution where if you have some dap tokens you can purchase these services from a dap service provider so a smart contract can make two kinds of requests that will use this decentralized storage an asynchronous request or a synchronous request let's talk about synchronous request first i just want to tell you how it works because it's actually pretty fascinating a synchronous request means that you need to have the answer before you can proceed with computation so for instance, maybe I need a random number in order to do something, or I need to retrieve some data from storage that's not in RAM anymore, and I have to have it before I proceed. If you send that smart contract request, that command to do that action to a node that doesn't have a DSP to a non-DSP node, like most of the EOS nodes right now, the code will just throw an exception. It'll throw an error and it won't even execute, won't show up on the blockchain, none of that. If you send it to a DSP node, then the same thing happens. It throws an exception. But the DSP is configured to realize that that kind of exception is a request for services. So once your command throws an exception, as it would on any other node, the DSP realizes it needs to step in, provide what you're asking for, whether it's a random number or some information from a web oracle or maybe something that's stored on IPFS. It will provide that information and then execute the transaction. This is, a, I think, a really fascinating way to kind of soft fork into a new second layer around EOS. And it's still a decentralized way because VRAM is providing access to IPFS. So when ADAPT makes a VRAM request, which again, they're very easy to implement, the Elemental Battles contract has already been modified so that you can go ahead and take a look at how to implement VRAM. And uh, there are maybe six or seven block producers, including EOS Sweden and uh, Attic Labs, a number of others I just forget, that have are up and running DSPs already 
already and they're improving the performance of the DSPs all the time. If your smart contract makes a VRAM request, let's say it needs some data that was saved a long time ago about a user and stored in IPFS through the VRAM mechanism and isn't in the block producer's RAM anymore, then first the uh, there's a warm up phase where the data is retrieved and validated because there's still a hash of the data on chain. We retrieve the data and we make sure it hasn't been tampered with. We make sure that no one has you know, maybe uh, you know, improved their high score or skipped a bunch of levels or, or whatever. And we make sure it hasn't been tampered with. And then we bring it in temporarily into RAM into like a temporary local cache, not local, that's not the right word, a temporary cache in block producers RAM to work with it. And then when we're done, we have a cleanup phase, ditches the cache, the RAM is freed up again, and we're back to IPFS. It's great. I've been working on a few EOS projects and it's been a tough challenge sometimes to figure out how we're going to keep people from cheating. I think this is a really interesting, it's a really helpful mechanism. Not only will the smart contract ultimately be kept in a decentralized fashion where you can't just arbitrarily alter it or you know pay for it to be altered or whatever, and its execution will be kept decentralized, but also the front end, all the code and all the storage of user files, all the records of history, you know, all the databases, all of that will be kept in a decentralized fashion, which will lead to the most decentralized applications that we have seen on other platforms. This isn't nearly as far along to my knowledge as it is on EOS now with Liquid Apps. And the guys who have programmed Liquid Apps, who are the guys who are behind a lot of this code, they're behind some of the code in EOS IO as well. They've worked on things like the uh, the RAM markets and things like that. So these are skilled developers building an amazing product that is going to revolutionize the DAP space. It goes beyond storage, like I said, a random number generation, that's a major problem. It's something that Cardano has been working a lot on. It's something that IOST prides itself in, in having a solution for. Um, right now on EOS, you have to do a kind of multi-party compute where uh, I have a secret and you have a secret. And then, I mean, it's fine, it works, but it's kind of clunky. And now we'll be able to do things like that. It's also difficult to get web oracles. I'm working on another project where we need cryptocurrency price data. And right now we have to kind of do that in a centralized fashion. We decentralize as, as much as possible. We grab from a bunch of different uh, APIs, different services, so that one can't bring the whole thing down. But uh, but Liquid Apps is offering a way to do decentralized web oracles. In other words, decentralized places to get information about the outside world that the blockchain normally can't find out about in a decentralized way. It's an amazing project. I highly recommend you check it out if you're a developer. You can go and start implementing VRAM right now, which alleviates a lot of concerns. And uh, I don't know what the costs will be ultimately, but the way it's set up is that DSPs can offer their own packages in a free market system. So if you're not happy with the services that, that you're being provided by your DSP, you're not happy with the price, you can go and shop for something better. That's great. And that's what we're looking at for Liquid Apps, DSPs. That's how they work. It's a game changer, guys. It's a game changer for EOS. We have a layer two resource scaling solution that is not centralized. And we are going to be able to create dApps that are from the smart contract all the way to the user facing front end. The database are all decentralized and the oracles it gets, the random numbers, it's all going to be decentralized fashion. It's amazing. It enables a level of decentralization that I think we have not seen before. It's it's really brilliant. There's a lot more details on how exactly this connects to IPFS, on, uh, on how all the Merkle tree validation works and things like that. And even even some hints as to how other things beyond just decentralized storage are going to work in a new article at uh, on the uh, Liquid Apps Medium that was again it was just posted yesterday. It gets a little bit technical, but you should go ahead and uh, try to push through. Keep an eye out for more videos, and if all of this kind of went over your head, but you want to learn about EOS, then keep an eye out for our developer courses coming up soon. I'll leave you now, Peter K. Signing out.